Are you not concerned about a rail capacity crunch for mm -hmm. when you're adding a thousand oil cars to the line? We well, we definitely know that that is the issue. So we're talking about buying and building and contracting new ones. That's what we're looking at uh, as as we talk about this. And we've been in uh, very detailed conversations with both CN and CP as we go forward. And, and obviously, we understand that moving uh, agricultural products is is a priority. And we're certainly not suggesting that that. Uh, that issue be lost. But going forward, as we deal with uh, the uh, the delays that we are seeing on pipelines, we cannot sustain, and the economy cannot sustain, and I'm not just talking about Alberta's economy, I am definitively talking about the Canadian economy, we cannot sustain a $10 a barrel price for Western Canadian Select. And that is um, not going to be remedied until we get back to at least pipeline economics, or sorry, rail economics. I mean, pipeline Pipeline economics is what we actually need in the long term for the best outcome for our economy. But if we can even get back to rail economics, we'll be in a better position. And so uh, as in the medium term, that's something that we're going to have to look at. We know that pipelines are safer than rail. Rail is, of course, uh, mo quite safe, uh, but we know pipelines are safer. But uh, and, and so that's why pipelines are the better option. For sure, but uh, you know, in the meantime, uh, the rule we're we're playing by the rules that are in place, and and that's uh, that's what we have to do. And uh, and as I, again, as I say, interprovincial shipping, these kinds of things, these are federal federal issues.